I'm going to start. Now, who was there last week when we did maintainers? You remember when we did maintainers? I will open my SQL studio now. We did something last week where we tried to automate our backup. I said we should set it to how many days? Did you do the same thing on your PC? Remember on our PC, we did backup. Rather than doing manual backup, we did automation. We schedule it to have like four days worth of backup. That if this, if it's more than four days, it should delete anything more than four days. Do we? Do we remember? Yes, we did, yes, we did all that. Did you did you do your start day? No. You didn't do it. Oh, I, I said what you should do it so that we can find the results later on, after I, some. Okay. Okay. After the session, I actually forgot everything you did. But that's why the video is there. You don't, don't worry. You know what's happening. You have to understand the concept of what we are doing. Don't try to memorize. It's to understand the concept. So if you're at work and they say, oh, we are having problems sometimes with the database, but we want to keep 14 days worth of database. How will I do the backup? What you will do is that you just say, oh, yeah, there's a tool that do, does that. And then you make research on it. And then you just start remembering some of those things, the step, or you go online or go to one test book and say this is how to automate it. You don't need to, you just need to know this is what it can, it can do. I don't want you to say you want to memorize. Don't memorize. Yes. You I not... actually forgot. Yes, I forgot about the recording. That's what Okay. Yeah, okay. So it. now, because I kept mine and it's working. So it's four days here now. So that means after one week or two is now, it has only reduced it to four days. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see my screen here? Where I'm clicking forward database. So it kept only the latest one, 27th, 26th, 23rd. If you look through the timestamp now, you will see now that it backs it up here at 0035. You understand what I'm trying to say? So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what it does. So it works. Yeah? Whether, good evening. So whether or not. Yeah. Um, so these, um, what, what do you call it? Um, backup. Does yeah. it automatically backup every day, whether you use the system or not? Yes, it automatically back it up, whether you use the system or not. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, but the purpose is to, um, to make sure that you have automation in place, so that you don't need to manually back things up. So it automatically back it up. Now. What and we have even advantage now. You have what we call developer edition. Everybody is using developer edition. If you are using developer edition, that means you have full access. People that are using Express, they don't even have the access to this one. When I was using these tools, then I we have to pay for the license because obviously it's a company, so you can't use Express, you know, to do this. So you have to use full version. Now the Microsoft released the developer edition that means that you can work actually everything about sql you must take advantage of it now because they might decide in the future and say it's not free again you get what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. so you must develop and that's why we must sql as long as we know sql trust me other sql language like oracle will be easy because you'll be able to transition quickly to know how to do oracle scripts and so on and so forth so you'll be able to know how to program in postgre sql and so on and so forth, because you know how to script in SQL. Is that okay? So mm. I don't know, maybe I should repeat this lesson or you go back to the video. I don't know, but we are going to continue on our lesson now. Let's okay. continue. The video is there. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's very important to, so it's what I've used before. That's why I taught it as well. So we're going to start with replication today. Last week, we discussed about replication. Last week, we, we talked about assigning roles if you remember assigning roles and um, last week as well so mm -hmm. i'm going to start with replication now what is replication replication simply means that you want to copy one database to the other so i wrote one note then one of my documentation i wrote then so i'll i'll read it i'll just send a copy to you guys but i'll just put it on the screen for you to read it now okay so if you can see, that's fine. But enable editing. Um, so you'll be able to see what I'm, I've written here. I was the one that wrote it then. I just, um, but it's good for you to review because that's what we're going to use a little bit to do our replication. So 
concept of replication. So now here we are, view, one page. So what is replication? I told us replication is a set of technologies of copying and distributing data and database object from one database to another, synchronizing between databases to maintain consistency. Using replication, you can distribute data to different locations and to remote or mobile users over local and wide area networks, dial up connections, wireless connections, and the internet. We can create copies of a database and share the copy with different users so that they can make changes to their local copy of the database and later synchronize the changes to the source database. Now, because before we start, there are concepts in for you to understand you know, SQL, what we call publisher. So, because when you are trying to do something on SQL, you'll be seeing names. So you have to understand what they do, the purpose. We have what we call publisher. Publisher is a server that makes the data available for subscription to other servers. What they mean is that publisher is the originator of the data that is going to distribute everything. It's where the data is coming from, okay? In addition to that, publisher also identify what data has changed at the subscriber. During the synchronization process, the publisher contains publications. So what you are trying to say here is like, it's like master and slave. So the master control everything. So publisher is kind of a master that control everything. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that's what they are trying to say. Then subscriber is a server that receives and maintains the published data. Publications to the data at the subscriber can be propagated back to the publisher, okay? Then we have distributor. Distributor is a server that manages the flow of data through the replication. Now, what I would say is that distributor is always the publisher. Let me put it that way, okay? So let me just summarize it. Even though they say it's distributor, there's certain um, mechanism in publisher that makes it uh, um, that makes data to be available, and that's why they call it distributor. Now we have agents. Now I told you, you know, anytime you go to your SQL services, let me open it to you. I will tell you the purpose. If you go to services.msc, can everybody go to services.msc? By Google. No. If you search in your windows services.msc if you type services.msc mm, okay i think i always repeat that if mm. everybody remember that one um, services.msc your services here yeah, this is what i call if you go to your services yeah you will see there are two type here you will see the one sql server here yeah, and sql server agent mm. you see this sql server agent is very, very powerful. It's what makes replication possible between publisher and subscriber. Now, you, if you get to a company environment, okay, because I'm giving you, it's better to know, if you get to a company but, environment. So publisher is like the source, isn't it? Yeah, publisher is like the source, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like the server, it's where the data is coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the one that will control everything is the originator of this of of everything mm. so now but there are different things you are going to come across and so i'm i'm mentioning them and one of them is sql server agent mm. so sql server agent is the one that play a key role so this sql server agent has to be started and automatic anytime you want to run replication so is the is a part if it is not running your replication will not works okay so for people that use full developer and they want to have subscriber and publisher, they must have what? SQL server agent, okay? That's the purpose. If you don't start it, it is not going to work. So I put it here that agents are the processes that are responsible for copying and distributing data between the publisher and subscriber. There are different types of agents supporting different types of replication, okay? Now, so I will stop there for now, okay? So, because I don't want us to, you know, be bombarded with theories and so on and so forth. And I told us last week, there are three types of replication. One replication simply means snapshot replication means that I just want to send a copy to you. He said, you need a copy of my database. I just want the replication. I don't, I don't want to synchronize any longer. As long as you send me the snapshot, I'm okay. 
So that's what we call snapshot replication. I did the snapshot. You all know the meaning of snapshot. You know, you just capture something and send it to someone. That is it. But when we talk about transactional replication, you send something to someone and that someone receive it. That person is a subscriber and the subscriber begin to edit it a little bit. And when the person edit it, the publisher now try to demand from the subscriber to say, have you edited it? Can you bring what you have edited? Can you bring it back to me? Okay. Now, that one is a one-way communication. If you look at it, it's a one-way. I send a copy to you, you change it, and I ask for you, have you changed it? Okay, bring everything you have changed to me, and I bring it back. That's what we call transactional replication, okay? Now, there's what we call merge replication. Now, this one is different to transactional replication. In the case that when you do merge, when I change something, he, for example, if I send you a snapshot first, and then you, you, you change something there, and I change something here, when you send yours to me, and I send mine to you, what is going to happen is that it's going to keep both of the changes we, um, we have made, okay? It's going to keep them. It's not going to, delete, it's going to merge them together, because what happens is that anytime you do that, the SQL Server agent, the merge replication, insert what we call unique ID for every changes you make. So because it insert unique ID, they call it row ID. Later on, when you, if you are in an environment they use replication a lot, you get to understand what I'm trying to say later on in future. Row ID simply means a unique ID for every column, for every rows in your tables. So. For example, if I said I want to create a new row here, I name it row one, and you create another row there, you name it row two. What happened is that, and sorry, you can name it row one, and then in that place also you name it row one. In that place, what happened is that the data from that place will come here and it will merge, it will become one, two, okay? Because they will not try to and delete each other. They won't delete, they won't cancel each other. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's going to merge together. It's not going to, so, and most people use merge because it's very powerful. Why? Because if any changes happen here, you don't need to worry that what you have changed here, something has to delete it. You get what I'm trying to say? That's the purpose of merge replication. So that's what we do here. So we're going to start with replication here. Um, so, what we're going to start is, I'm going to open my SQL Server here now, is that we're going to start with, um, let me do this. We're going to start with, um, what you will start with? You are going to start with setting up everything. You are going to set up what we call publications and everything. So we are going to replicate adventure works, this one. You see it now, Adventure Works. We're going to replicate it, Adventure Works. Can we see it, Adventure Works? So, what we're going to do is that we are going to create a new database we want to replicate to. Okay, we want to try snapshot replication first. What did I say? Snapshot replication. So, you first create the database you want to replicate to, which should be a subscriber. So I'll say databases, new database, and I'll say subscriber. I'll just say subscriber, okay? Say subscriber. I'll just call it subscriber. Now, let me tell you something. Remember that we are only using one server here, which is our PC, but you are not going to be using um, one PC, you might have another server, say connect to. So that's the server. Probably this one will be your second server. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I know this one is not working. It's Lenovo PC um, Express. I've removed it. But that one will be your second server. So that one will be here. That's where you are going to create your own database. But because we want to use only one PC, I created it here. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So in a normal working environment, let me just try this for you. Suppose I connected now. 
So suppose this one is Lenovo PC. Another one would be below that you want to do, but because I only have one PC, I'm not in the work environment or anything. It's going to be just this one we are practicing. That's why I create new database here, okay? So it's very important to know that. So I've called it subscriber, so it's here. Now, what am I going to do next? Is that I'm going to create what we call SQS Server Authentication. Because the reason is because you are going to use it is because if you don't create it, you know, I was talking about SQS Server Authentication. If you don't create it, then they will not be able to communicate. Because for example, if you have another person that is using that server, they just give you an access to that server, all right? And then you can't use their Windows authentication. They must have the same SQL authentication so that anytime it's communicating, it will know that this is the username that is working, that is trying to replicate with it. So it's best to have the same what? The same username and password, okay? So what you are going to do is that you already created one that day. It's called unlimited, if I'm right. It's called unlimited and um, unlimited. We created one. If you haven't created it, we can create it again. So you go to security. I've created unlimited before, but I'll recreate it. You go to logins here, say new login, and then you call it unlimited. SK server authentication, you call it unlimited. Yeah, I've already created it, but I'll create another one for our good. So I'll just say sub. Subscriber. Now just put password subscriber subscriber. You can, but if you have the unlimited one, you don't need to do this one. Just to show you again what you need to do. Subscriber. Okay. And then don't enforce password policy. I've already named it that way. I can go to server rules. I can say it must be sysadmin. I just want to make sure that I have proper permission user mapping i must have access to two now to this one i must give it adventure works and the subscriber because these are the two that we want to try to replicate to use snapshot replication okay so that there will never be any error so i said it should be db owner here and I, under here i select this one it should be db owner as well so already db owner db owner okay on this one as well so i will now click okay so now I've created what we call subscriber here as well. Yeah, so if you go here under this subscriber, you will see what we call, if you go to their security and logins, what do you see? You will see subscriber here. Did you see subscriber? Now, if you go to adventure works as well, remember the last time we give one on limited and limited. The limited one was, giving only public and it doesn't have access to it isn't it but the unlimited one and subscriber we have access to it you could see now there is it now that means anytime they want to communicate they will never have communication issue okay that's why we created that and uh, we created the sql authentication okay so and which is very what, yeah what yeah does that mean that in all of the databases um there will be security in there and there will be logins. Yes, if you and want this. Yeah, yeah then we can see all of those um, logins that you just created. Yes, okay. yes, oh. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You will see it. Okay. So now, what we are now going to do is that I don't want to now. I believe that your firewall is okay, okay. But later on, in, in future, let, that's why I think I'm still going to create a kind of a short session myself. For, in, for myself to create for you guys to understand what we call Windows administration because sometimes you have to understand basic, you know, I was telling you about understanding basic things of IT. For example, when I was mentioning services.msc, you must know that, oh, services.msc means that I can restart my server there. I can restart my SQL. Um, you want to quickly do something on your PC. You want to troubleshoot something. You might be able to understand how to, you know, block firewall, you know, all those things as well. You know, all those basic things you must understand as well um, in a working environment. Maybe it might be firewall issue. On that yeah. note, on that note, bro, Michael. Yeah. Now, um, actually, on the one of the, the laptops I'm using, yeah. um, the SQL server agent okay. is disabled. 
because it's an express probably yeah that's what i wanted to know yeah. okay Thank you. SKS, our agent is, is express. So that's why, because it's, the agent is very powerful and that's why they include it in developer now. It's free for us to use. So that's why. Okay. okay. And our advice, if we are going to continue in the advanced one later on, please, we have to start using this developer because it's, it's giving us an advantage at the moment because after this, we are going to do projects and we're going to start with SSRS. We must- How do I get the developer then? Oh, I thought you have installed developer already. Um, now, the one I have on my system, now I need to now know if I have developer express. I think it's... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you have all these features now, maintenance plan, in the one you are using now? Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've got those. Okay. That's developer for you. If you want to yeah. know more, you can why, go to... Why is my... Server SQL Server agent disabled then? Oh, is it okay? Wait, wait. If you have maintenance plan, let me finish. Let me to make it easy. Now, if you go to maintenance plan, yeah. Um, hold on. Okay, yours is disabled. You mean in this place? Can you try to right click and say restart and see what's going to happen? Click restart. What happened? Where are we again? SQL Server agent. No, my SQL Server agent on that MSC. Um, Services.msc. Services.msc, yeah. It's disabled. Okay, it's disabled. You can restart it. So what I'll tell you yes, is the... I try I, to restart it, but it's not allowed. It's not bringing out. Okay, I see what you mean. It's not, okay. It's not enabled. Yeah. Did you go to properties? Okay, maybe I need to try properties. Because if you have maintenance plans, that yeah. should be. Do you have? Do you see anything here? Like. Okay. Maybe you ca just carry on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. So let's continue now. So we already know that there will not have communication issue. So now we'll still talk about other things later on Windows administration and so on and so forth. So. The next thing we're going to do is that we are going to um, configure replication now. So what we are going to do, so what we're going to do is that we're going to start with, um, I'm trying to gather things for us so that I'm trying to see what's going to help us much more. Um, sorry about that. Um, trying to see what we can do quickly so the first thing we're going to do we want to start with replication so i want us to start with um sorry about this um okay i've seen what i'm looking for so now if you look here you see replication here isn't it did you see did you see what you need to do first is to say right click this replication and say launch configure distribution. So the first thing you will do is that you configure distribution. And then when you say configure distribution, when you say configure distribution is the first thing you are going to do. Now, you configure your distribution because if you don't configure it, you will not be able to start publication. So you have to say, I want to configure distribution. So I'll click next. Now, he said, this distributor is the server responsible for storing replication information used during synchronization. Now, remember I told us that if, for example, you have two servers, probably because we are using one PC here, so this one will remain the, um, the distributor, but it might be another PC you want to turn to distributor. But in this case, it's still going to remain my PC as well. That's going to be distributor. So I'll just leave this. We act as some distributor. SK Server will create a distribution database and log. So I'll now click next. So now, in this case, just leave it this way for now, okay? So leave it this way, the way it is now, because if it's in another place, for example, if you have another PC you are connected to, it's not your main PC, but it's another SK Server you connected to, it's not your PC. Probably you have to put a share, part here, like, you know, 
this thing like this, you know, a share path, but this is not a share path. So you leave it this way, yeah, for now. Click next, then leave it this way, distribution. Then click next, I'll select PC here, yeah, and then say, you now say configure distribution. Now you have already configured your distribution and that's it. So that means that this distribution will be, more, will be helping you to monitor if you have more than one publisher, you can have more than one publisher, you can have more than one subscriber, but most often it's good to have one publisher, many subscribers, okay? There are some people that are employed, honestly, because replication is a wise, is a wide thing. There are some people that are employed to just do replication. And so you might have different configuration of, you know, publishers to subscriber and everything like that. So it's possible. But for now, you most companies that employ a DBA and visitor, they don't really use many subscriber or many publisher or like that. So just let's leave it this way. So we have already done the configure the distribution now. So what you're not going to do is now, you now want to create your own pub publication, okay? So what you will do now is that you create your own publication. So I will now say, I, what I will do now is that I'm going to say, um, let me see what I can do. I'm now going to configure publication. I'm going to go here, I can click new publication here. So if I say new publication, I'll click next. Can you see me? And now look, you see now, new publication means that you want to start with a publisher. Adventure works as a source now, isn't it? Because it's the one that we want to use as kind of a master database. So I'll click next. Now, what type of replication do you want? You will say snapshots first, because we want to practice two today. We want to practice snapshots. And sometimes they give you the definition here, okay? And then the next one is merge replication, okay? But in this case, we'll start snapshot replication and um, publication. So you click next. So that means what it's trying to say is that this table and this database is going to only give snapshot replication, okay? So now it will ask you, do you want to replicate all the tables or you want to select few, okay? Do you want to replicate all the stored procedures? Remember, we have not even started stored procedures. So there's a rule for that. Views, indexed, user defined functions. So we're going to select everything, everything for now. Snapshot is going to snapshot everything. So I'll click next. And then don't worry about this. You just click next. And then don't worry for now. When you begin to get advanced in, you know, in everything, it's going to do that. So I will just say create snapshot immediately and click the snapshot available to initialize subscription. Now, what it's trying to say here is that when you create a snapshot, anytime you want to go back and do the same thing, you don't need to go back and recreate wizard again and do snapshot. It's going to just apply the one you have done before. So that will be your initial subscription and your initial snapshot to do. So I'll click next. Now, do you see snapshot agent here? Now, the snapshot agent will be something that you have already created. I, you know, I told you you should create one username then, the SQL Server authentication. So you're going to click security settings and then you are going to now type it. Remember, you are using SQL. So I would rather say you use your, this one, SQL Server agent, but connect to the publisher, you use this one, okay? So don't worry about this one because we, we can't process account. This is domain account, so we are not using this one. So we use this one. We'll call it login, we call it subscriber. You can call it subscriber, subscriber. So it's better to use this one, okay? So anytime, anytime you are trying to, they will use this to connect to, do you get what I'm trying to say? So they will use this to connect, to communicate to each other between the subscriber and the publisher. So I'll click okay. I'll click next, I'll click next. I can call it a name, practice, 
snapshots. So finish. So that's it for now. So it always takes time. So we are going to leave it. It's going to do snapshots. Now, let me repeat again. Snapshot is the initial copy of all the database first to send. So, but because we are doing snapshot replication, it's going to stop here. It's going to do only snapshots. It's not going to do anything again, okay? Now, suppose we now select merge replication, which we are going to do next. The merge replication is going to start with the snapshot and then it's going to now leave it. And then if we make any changes, it's going to be, you know, making changes automatically for you, okay? That's what we call merge replication. So we'll close it now. So what happened next is that if I go here, did you see now? If I click this and I say, view snapshot agent status, what's going to say? Ha, ah, that's good. This is a good one. Is there access to the parts? This is denied. That means it's not able, to, it doesn't give me permission. So that's one of those things we have to troubleshoot. Why is it not giving me permission? So I will see now. I can say start again. Why is it not giving me permission? So it's saying it's denied. So we have to know why it denies me. Do you know why? I will tell you why. It has to be shared. What did I say? It has to be shared. So you have to go to these parts. See program files, Microsoft SQL, this and this. So I will show you how to do share folder. Do, do we know how to do share folder? Every one of us. Can, do we know how to do share folder, please? Do you know how to share things? Like you want to share something with someone. Hello? Um, do we know how to share anything? And um, do we know how to you, share folder? You've invested, a lot of, you've invested a lot of mental effort in a scrum master role. In, in your energy, didn't you? Hello? Who is talking there? <laughs> That's someone is saying something. Okay, let me just um put um Chukudi. I think it's um, okay. How to share folder on where? No, do you know? Do you know how to sh share a folder? If I say I want you to share a folder, do you know how to share a folder? Is it through the five path? Yes, through the five path. Yeah. So let's go there now. Let me show you. SQL Server, okay. Let's go through what they have said here. MSQL, then we'll go to MSQL, Rep Data, Lenovo PC. See what happened. There is nothing in there. There's no shared part here. It's saying that it cannot create it. So that means that we have to create this part, okay? Lenovo PC, this thing, okay? So that means I omitted this as part of our stuff. So what we would do is that I'll go back to, I can create it here. I can say rep, rep, replication data here. I can say, let me see what I can do. So I can go back here to replication and say publisher. Um, let me just, um, Distributor properties, uh, PC, PC. Okay. Yeah, I'll just put it. Be data. Be data. Okay. Okay. Put it on for me. Um. Um. Hold on. Um, let me just call it new folder here. I'll call it replicate. And then this is how to share things. Right click and then create properties. And then sharing. I can say advanced sharing. And then we can see share this folder. 
I can say permissions. Let me allow everyone for now. Apply. Okay. Apply. Apply. Okay. That's how to share things in Windows. Okay. Close. So now if I do this now, I can go to properties. So sharing. I can use this now in my publish publication now. You can see here. Um, you can change this one now. You can click OK. So I can say OK now. So I can go back here now. Sorry about that. I think we're supposed to have put this in new distribution this. But it's part of troubleshooting as well. You have to share things. Let me start again. You should be able to allow it now. Because I've shared it now. Access to the part is denied. It's still given to this part. So I'm okay. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to um let me just see if I can select this. Um Um, and I'm delete this. Um, I'll display what should I do? Disabling because I want this to work rather than stressing myself. Um, well, I enjoy this troubleshooting because these are the things you face when you. Yeah. So I want to just delete it I, because I'm now using the one I was using before doesn't have this. So I'm trying to see what option. Normally I delete it and then now it's giving me. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say new. I'm going to see what's going to say new publication, nest, adventure works. So snapshots. No, 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 sorry. I will say I have to disable this. Distributor properties. Sorry, there's supposed to be delete option here. Even if we distribution, hold on. Yeah, it has replicate. Yeah, okay. This one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me delete this first. Yes. Because I've created a new a new share part. So it, 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 what happened is because I've created a new share part, I have to create a new publications and so on. Why is it not allowing me? Um, delete. Cannot execute because it do not exist. Okay, let me refresh it now. So let's create a new one, okay? I'll just leave that one for now. New, Nest, Adventure Works, Nest, Snapshot Replication. We'll do tables, everything, Nest. We have already done this. Nest, create snapshot immediately, Nest. Security agent, we'll use the same thing. We just want to use subscriber. Subscriber, subscriber, okay, oh sorry, okay, next, create the publication, a name, I'll just say, repli to, just, just, so, that case. Okay, close. So now we have the new one here now. So if I right click it, it should be working now. If not, I don't know why it's doing that. So adventure is pointing here. Lenovo PC Adventure works. Yeah, can we take? Can we be careful enough to look at that path, please? Yeah, yeah. The path I'm trying to look for. Yeah. What I can do, 
is that okay this is the part it doesn't have that part so that's the problem lenovo okay. pc replicates unc it, oh okay hold on Rab, let me try this um hold on for me let me do this and that's why permission issue is one of the things that we have to look at as well we have already shared it we need security we haven't given it any security as well you add we all know how to add things like this like on pc like do we know how to add permission on PC or something like that? Isn't it? Do we know how to do that? I'm not sure I've done that before myself. Ah. Let me know. I want to look at our username. Um, I don't even know the username in my PC here. <laughs> check. Let me check my users here. <laughs> yes, Lenovo. Why is it doing that? Lenovo. Let me try um Oshai OS tech names. Hold on. If you want to get username, we go to administrative tools. We know how to use administrative tools as well, machine like do you know how to do that as well. Um yeah it's what you at least you it's a common thing you have to know how to do because it's not it's not something you are trying to learn every bit of it but it's something you should be aware of like ah, i have to have a username i have to have this to this permission issue do you get what i'm trying to say so i'll just say i just want to find my username here b a c l a yeah lenovo is there i know my lenovo is there i don't know why it's not giving lenovo permission so I'll just go back here and say Lenovo. Lenovo. Applications. What's Lenovo? Let me just... It's not dictating it. So, system. Let me just say add everyone. It won't say we won't check everyone. Everyone is okay now. So, I'll just for now, it's not dictating my username. I don't know why. So, Okay, so I've given you permission to everyone. Probably, maybe it's going to allow everyone now. Access is denied because even though I shared it, it's still saying access is denied. So it's now working. So now that's one of those things with um with um replication. You must have everything correctly. Like um, you must have permission correct as well. So these are the basic things you must know. That's why I said initially that I have to create kind of a small video for us to know how to do windows basic task as well mm -hmm. so for example like permission issue how do i share you must know how to share a folder you know like giving permission normally you won't do everyone you might look for the username that is that you know is common you know between the two between the two um server you are trying to replicate you get what i'm trying to say or something that a username that is using that particular pc and then you can just give it a, permi a permission here, like full permission on the folder, you know, replicate. And then you have to share it as well. This is how to share things. You, If someone said, for example, someone is in another company or is, is in the same department, but really they don't really normally have access to everything on your PC, but mm -hmm. you want to share something for them. You can share this folder and give them these parts and say, do you see this one I highlighted? Copy it and send it to them so you can have access to that part. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what we call sharing folder. Okay, is that okay? Mm -hmm. And then you go to advanced sharing. You can say permission. You can add the person instead of saying everyone here. You can say hard, and then you look for the username of that person if if it's in the same company. You understand now? And then say. So now it's working. It's finished now. So that means that everything is done. It's replicated. You see? Now if I close it now and I go here. Remember, initially, this subscriber doesn't have tables before. You see? Now, if I refresh it now, look. If I refresh it now, because it's already done, I just want to refresh it. Oh, why is it not there? Oh, it hasn't finished. Sorry. So, let me go back. It has already done snapshot. Now, I have to now... It has finished now. We just did the snapshot, but we have not applied it to subscriber. So I'll now go to local subscription, right-click, 
new subscription. We only did this um, publisher. We have to say we want to select our subscription. So say, who, what is this subscription? Uh, you see, it's asking you, who is going to distribute the the data. I say Repli2, we distribute it. I say Nest, and then say run all agents at the distributor Lenovo Pussy. Now look at this statement. This is two. I'm saying they are one call pull and push. If you say pull, it means that it's going to pull in it from the subscriber. The subscriber will be using the resources in his own machine, okay? But if you say push, that means that the distributor is going to be the one, like, I mean, the publisher is going to be the one that is using his own SQL Server agent to do the work. It's going to be the one that is saying, I'm pushing this thing to you, I'm pushing the changes to you, I'm doing this, okay? So in this case, we are going to just use this one, okay? Push, that's all. And I, I select Nenovo's PC. I will look for my subscriber. Who is my subscriber? This is the database for subscriber. Click Next. And then now, you have to now know how to con connect here. This is it. Connect on, to subscriber. You select this. You can double click. Click this. Now, you have to know how to use this. Run the following Windows account. You can use this one do this thing I did the other time because they have to communicate with the same password. Remember, subscriber? 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 I hope my password is correct. Sir. So I'm using small letter, small letter here, but you can use anything you want to use there. Okay. Okay. I'll, now, look at this. You see, if you look at it now, I want to tell you something because you are new to this. Remember, we are only doing snapshots because it's a snapshot replication. Don't say wrong continuously because snapshot is the first one for snapshots is large, you know, is a large database. So you can't be saying run it continuously it means that you are going to be running. You are sending a large database every minute. It's going to crash your PC. So because you know what you are doing snapshot, you just say, run on demand only you don't even to because it's a snapshot it's not major replication do you get what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. so it's a run on demand only is a snapshot because snapshot means you are taking a whole lot of database and you're sending it to another location okay so you click next and then immediately and then now it's asking you do you want to do it now or you want to do it at first synchronization just say immediately now so it's going to start it now create the subscription next finish okay close so that's all done um so now that's our subscriber now we could see it here can everybody see it now remember we just started it you now say view synchronization status so it means that it started doing the what the snapshot now. Look, subscriber, publication, publication database. This is the one. So it's doing the book now. Do you see now? It's trying to put all the data in adventure works and sending it into this subscriber. This is what is happening now. Normally it takes time because this is a small database. It shouldn't take much time. Okay. But normally if you are working in a company, it will take a large database. It's going to take a lot of time. So this is snapshot. And now we're going to do repli um, merge later on, okay? So we're going to leave this until it finish, okay? And then we are now going to um, continue with other things, okay? So we can't be waiting for this, but trust me, it's going to work okay, all right? So this thing, I summarize it for you. And I believe that if you go back and go back and practice, trust me, you'll be comfortable. It's what I summarize. Some people struggle with it, but I tell you, if you but later on, when you get to, advanced things you now know oh i want to only publish this part of the tables i got you get what i'm trying to say so you are okay with this now so please rewatch the video learn how it works just the concept i i have done now it will help you you must know how to create a sql server authentication that will help you know everything to be easy db owner db owner you get what i'm trying to say so i hope you understand this thing now so that's for snapshots we want to do other thing as well we want to look at, you know, different things. I wanted to talk about sh shrink database, okay? There's what we call shrink. 
uh, maybe you have not heard of, remember that anytime you create database, you will see what we call log MDF. And if I show you something now, hold on. Hold on. Anytime you run database, did you see this thing? These two, one is called log, one is called file. This one is log, this is MDF and log. I told you if you want to attach, you use MDF. If you want to back up, use, you use what, BAK. However, shrink, the reason why they shrink database, you know the word shrink. Shrink means that you want to make sure that the size of that, of that, si of that file is small. Now, anytime you are using database, you are using database, you are using database, what happens is that the more you use the database, the more the log file increases, okay? Now, the log file sometimes needs shrinking. In fact, sometimes the database might need shrinking, but it's not good to always shrink the MDF file, okay? The only thing you can do is that because the log increase more than the, more than the, um, even if you try to reduce the size of your database, the log will still increase. So the only thing you can do to log is to shrink it. Okay. So how do I shrink? How will I shrink database? The first thing you would do is that you go to this place, databases. Um, is it databases? No, sorry. You go to the database you want to work with first, and let's say you want to work with Chinook. Okay. I'll go to properties. The reason why I don't want to use Adventure Works is because we are using it for replication. I don't want to interrupt. So I say properties. And I go to, um, I'll go to files, if it's there. No, it's not there. File groups, where is there? I'll be looking for it. So ah, where, where will I shrink my database? Now, look, recovery mode there. I'll click what? Simple. Did you see? You select simple. Normally, in most places, it's full recovery. Okay? Full recovery. Simple means that it's going to be simple. It's not going to, it's going to, recover the basic part of things but normally in a complex environment this thing should be set to full but for our own case you have to select simple for your shrink select simple okay when you select simple click okay now what you will go now is that you now go to the file you want to shrink right click task you now go to shrink you say i want to shrink a file not database now file so you can select which one you want to shrink is it data data is mdf is it log or data, forget about file stream data. So log, so I say I want to shrink log to how long, to how much I will select the one. You say currently allocated, so mine is, is small already, but I want to reduce it. So if I want to reduce it, what I'll do is that I'm going to say shrink this database to probably all points because uh, it's already small. So I'll just say 0.4. So I've already shrink it to 0.41 megabyte from 1.05. So if I look at my Chinook database, so let me let me check my Chinook log file and see how how, how big it is first. Um, let me ch check for you. See, um, program files. So um, backup. Where is the scale server? Um, is it MDF data? So let's look for Chinook log. Shinik log, you see, it's 1.072 now. We want to shrink it now. We want to see what it's going to give to us, okay? So I'll now shrink it now. As it reduces, it shrink files to 0.41. So I'll shrink it now, okay. So I've shrink it now because it's not much, so it's going to be quick as well. So if I refresh it now, it's not. I think it doesn't want to shrink more than that. Hey, wait. Chinook log, hold on for me. Properties, 1.04. The reason why it doesn't shrink, I will tell you the reason. The reason is because it's kind of, um, it's already small already. There's no need to, I don't think it can do more than that. So I'm looking for one that is a large one, a large log file. Let me try subscriber log and see if it's going to work. No, 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 I'm doing subscriber at the moment. Um, yeah, let's look at MSDB log and see what's going to happen. MSDB log. I'll try MSDB log. Is that okay? So we'll try MSDB log. So I'll look for MSDB database. MSDB. 
Um, aha, we don't have MSDB here. I want to look for it. What will I do? I, I see that it has MDF. What will I do with MSDB? I'll do this. What, will I do restore or attach? Because it's MDF, I'll do attach. I'll go to add. I'll look for the MDF now. The M, this thing. MSDB MDF, okay. So, oh, it's not a read database. Okay, I'll leave it then. So the shrink, I think that's how to do shrink. I'm sorry, I don't have anything to shrink here. Everything shrinked already. I'm looking for the one that will be easy for us to shrink, not in. Um, probably example lesson, log, no, no way. So we'll leave it that way for now. So that's how to do shrink. So go back to the video. First, select simple before you shrink. Right click the database, go to properties, click options, then select simple. In most cases, it might be in full already. So select simple. And then when you finish shrinking, when you now right click and say shrink the, the log file or the file you want to shrink, or it might be database, but I don't recommend people shrinking database anyhow. Don't shrink it anyhow because you might lose some important data anyway. So files, it's normally log file that's increasing because you don't need log file, honestly. You click log and then you click OK. When you click OK, what you will do next, you go back to that Chinook, go to task and sorry, properties, then go to option and select where it was before, simple. Mine was in simple before. Normally it should be in full anyway. Everything should be in full. I don't know why it's in this thing. So I hope everything is clear there. Please rewatch the video, it's nice. So let's look at synchronization status and see what is happening. View synchronization status. Cannot use contents or pretest on table index view because it's not in full desk index. And now, oh, it's completed. Oh my God. I think it's finished now. But it just give a warning. That's a warning it's trying to say. So, um, that one is a warning. So, but don't worry about that one is in this, but that doesn't mean it will not, it will not. So it, it has finished now, close. So I'll finish now. So I'll now go to that same subscriber. I'll refresh it. I hope it works. I hope it's not going to give me. Now it's here. Did you see it now? Everything is here now, subscriber. We have now, what? Create our snapshot replication. Is that okay? So that's snapshot replication for us. Um, so if you want to now do merge, what will you do for merge? So, you, um, yeah, everything, absolutely. Yeah. Everything we've got under Adventure Works 2014 is now under subscriber. Under subscriber. Remember that we select everything. In some cases, it might be tables alone you want to publish, but because we are doing practice, I just select everything. Tables, start procedures, but we have not started start procedures. We have not started views. Mm -hmm. So, but today we are going to do views anyway. So, what we're going I, to. What if I decide to delete the adventure works now? Yeah, it is still going to remain in. No, you. If you delete adventure works, it's not going to affect your subscriber database. Subscriber will still remain there. Okay. But your replication will not work again because you have deleted. Um, this the publisher, so it's not going to do anything again. What if yeah. I update? If I begin to work on subscriber database, maybe I begin to add things uh -huh. um, on that subscriber database. Would that, yeah. would that be, um, would would that merge with Adventure Works? I think you mentioned. Yeah, no, this one will not work with that because it's a snapshot. Remember this now. But when we now do merge, it will work because you made a change. Yeah. So yeah. that it can. You know, if you select pull or push any one of them, it's going to just do the replication, merge replication. But this one is snapshot. So in this case, it's not going to do that. But if we now create a merge replication, it's going to what make the changes and do the adjustments. So let me give you a scenario. My first project when I first came to Aberdeen was an helicopter company. Sometimes like they fly in, in, in Sombra and then in Aberdeen. So what is happening is that I try to do replication process technology where anytime they download in Aberdeen, before the helicopter will stop in Sombra, it, it will appear there and it has to communicate through the SQL database. And anytime they download in Sombra 
or anywhere they go to with the aircraft, with the laptop, it has to show in Aberdeen. So you could see now that how it was, it's merged. So it's not going to delete in one form or the other. So we use merge replication for that um, process. So that's what I would say. Is that okay? Yeah? yeah. Okay. So we can create merge replication now. If you want us to create it, it's the same thing. It's not, it, 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 there's no difference. The main thing is that it is going to first create snapshot. And after snapshot, it's going to now, when you now make changes, but in this case, you have to schedule this one because you have to schedule it to say every one hour, check for any changes between the two databases. If there's a change in publisher, put it in subscriber. If there's any change in subscriber, put it in what? In the publisher. So we're going to create another one called Merge, okay? So we'll click New Publication, Nest, Adventure. We'll use Adventure Works, okay? Say Adventure Works. We now say merge. Forget about these two. This one are not come up. Is transactional is is one way. It's kind of similar to merge, but it's not merging. So, I, if I, it's the only changes you make in subscriber that is going back to the publisher. So, nothing will change again after that. But in merge, both are communicating. They are merging. You could see the word merge means things come together. Okay, and then next, it will ask you say we are using SQ. So let's just select this, select this. Let me select this triad. This index views always give problem, but it's okay this way, next. And then next. Now look at this. You know, I was mentioning something the other time in the video. And SQ server, we had a unique identifier column with a unique index and the row GUID property to each of the following tables. The purpose of that is to identify everything so that nothing will delete you know, the data from each row. So the unique identifier for everything, we help to merge data together, okay? So I'll say next, I'll say next. I'll say create snapshot immediately. Now, should I do the snapshot engine to run at the following times? Do you want it to run every one hour? So you can say change and say run this thing daily only on every one hour. I can say daily on every one hour. It depends on how you want your major application to work. I can say occur every one hour or two hours. So I will say every, I can say every, every five hours. I don't use it every day anyway. I'll just say every five hours. I will, I will select recurring, uh, enable reoccurs daily because every 14 days, I might say one day, between one day, five hours, I can select this. You can change, you know, you just look at what you want here. Of course, every 14 day. Okay. So of course every day, every five hours between this and this. So it means every five hours, it will be checking if there's any data change between both subscriber and publisher. I'll click okay here, yeah. I'll click next. I will select the same thing, the same just subscriber, subscriber, next, then publishing question, I will call it merge, merge practice one. Finish. So now you see now it's it's repeating the same process. The difference between this and snapshot is that this one is now going to be continuous. Now it's not going to be creating snapshot every time. It's going to be kind of create snapshot once, and then after that, it's going to be making small changes. So only small changes will now be replicating between each other because both database now has the same copy. You get what I'm trying to say. For example, you have 10 pounds. You give me 10 pounds. That means we both have. So if you have one pound on top of yours, the only thing you will do to me, you also, you will send one pound to me. So I'll have one. It's not that you're going to send the whole 11 to me again. You get what I'm trying to say. So that's the difference between um, snapshot replication and other replication. So snapshot is only sending just the whole 10 pound and I'm not doing anything again, okay? But for merge means that you first do the snapshot, which is sending the bulk part of the database first, and then any changes you are making will just continue to make, you know, send the changes between both 
um, both servers, okay? So I will now click close and that's it. So what I will do next is that I'm going to create a subscriber for that, for the replication. So I will now say subscriber. I will now say I want to select match practice one. I will use the same thing. But remember, I'm just doing this because I'm limited to one PC. Normally, sometimes it depends. You might want to run each agent. I can say run each agent pool means that this, for example, you have another laptop somewhere. That laptop is part of your company's um, um, work. But sometimes they need to deploy the laptop somewhere else to work. And then that laptop, anytime they make changes, there, you want it to re reflect here. But you don't want too much thing on your own server. You don't want your server to be you know, doing the hard work. You can select this. Even though they are going to do the same thing, but you select run. That means that it's going to be that one that is going to be pulling it. The subscriber will be the one making use of its own resources to what? To, to, to get the data, you see? So he said this option reduces the processing overhead at the distributor and let each subscriber administer the synchronization of a subscription. Do you see what I'm trying to say there? So it reduces overhead, you see, because for example, you have a company that has a, a server that is distributing to 100, 100 networks. So if you have 100 networks, you can't expect that. But if everything is run from the other 100 networks, that means the 100 networks that is there, the first network will be pulling it. So it's using its own resources. It's not going to be, you understand, giving too much you know, um, power and resources to the, the computer will crash, isn't it? Yeah. So it's good to use this one, okay? So run, all right, next, select Lenovo, subscription database, I'll use subscriber again, I'll click next, and then I'll click this one. Um, so select this, the same thing we did, isn't it? Using SQL, we use that one, subscriber, okay? Subscriber. Okay. Now, you in this case, you don't normally do run demand on only unless you want to, you don't, it doesn't normally happen every time. But most of the time you schedule it because you are not there. You don't know when they are going to make changes. So you say, ah, I want to say divine schedule. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So in this case, I'll just leave it for now. Or we can say the weekly, daily. Let me just do the one we did the other time. I think that one was snapshot. So I made a mistake of that one, but it's fine. So snapshot is the one I say you should be doing every five hours then. But don't worry, it should be this one. Okay, next. Immediately, yes. Initialize immediately means that create the first snapshot first. Because if it doesn't create it, it's not going to start to image. So initialize means that you create the first initial. So Lenovo, subscriber type clients okay Lenovo PC first to sub now I want to tell you this sometimes there's a conflict well now when you begin to get advanced in replication there what we call conflict resolution management conflict resolution management simply means that they both phone two staffs and they update they don't know that they, they both update things on the server at the same time they are updating the same record now they now want to merge on the, because they're on the replication network, they want to merge. They want to say which one should win. Is it the publisher should win first or the subscriber? So it's always good to make publisher to win first, okay? Because it's the main server first, okay? There's a reason that, okay? So we we'll leave it client for now. And then click next. And then click next. So what happened? Okay, you know why? I wanted to mention it. Because we have created snapshot before, which you can't have two types of replication on one database. So I'll remove this snapshot, okay? This snapshot first, the one we have before. Is that okay for us? Or you, you tried to remove it before, but it didn't go. No, no, no. The first one, snapshot. We've okay. done, done snapshot. No, you, you see the one we call Repli2 was a snapshot. Yeah. So it's working. Remember, it's working. But you tried but, to remove the first one, but it didn't. 
Yeah, that one will still remove itself. I think there was a glitch there. But this one is working. It's the snapshot. So I'll remove this, yeah? So I'll just delete this one. Should work now. So Oh, what am I even doing? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, where is the, oh, sorry, subscription. I should remove this subscriber. This is what I want to remove. This one should work. Yeah, because I have this subscription already subscribed to this snapshot Repli2 before. I supposed to remove it. You can have both snapshots subscriber and merge subscriber. It won't work. So, we have to create a new one. Um, sorry, that match wrap practice one. Pool, so that pool there, then for PC. Uh, no, sorry. See. Subscriber. Next. Uh, subscriber. 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 So this one, just on demand only. No. So we are going to do define schedule as we did the other time daily. Of course, one hour, five hours every day. You can choose anyone. I'm just choosing this. Yes, but I'm going to still delete it anyway. Initialize immediately. Hope it works now. Next, perfect. Because it shouldn't give error now. So it's fine now. So don't worry about this one. This one is just warning. So it's starting the synchronization. So I'm sure for the cannot be in your image because the stamp is not available. So just leave that one. So I will now go here. Let me click refresh. Um, look at subscription. So now this is the one for merge here. So because if I say view snapshot agent status, login phase for user, I didn't put on the password very well. I've put the wrong password. Login phase for user subscriber. See, that's one of the things. So how am I going to do that? So I have to quickly go to properties and see if I have put it very well. Um, where's my password? Articles. Uh, these are those things you come across, but don't worry. Let's get security server agent. Don't know why he's saying that subscriber. So I'll put it there subscriber. Subscriber. That one should be okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this. Probably I've not told you. But don't worry, later on, the one called publication access list. If this one is not there, you have to add it. We already have it already because we, it is DBO now automatically. Sometimes you have to add it to make life easy for you, but it's okay this way. So I'm just showing you that. So let's try it again. So snapshot is not available again. So let's try a few snapshot agents. Should work now, please. If not, I'll go to the... So it's working now. So I don't know what that, why I made a mistake in typing my password. But so that's merge for you. So merge is done. If you make changes now on your database, it's going to reflect after one hour. Or if you are in a, after five hours, if you are in a rush, ah, you can say run on demand. You can just right click it and say run the merge replication on demand. You can always right click. And they run on demand. So it quickly is going to do that as well. So that's merge replication for you. Guys, it's very important. So you can Google it as well. Like there are a lot of jobs for it as well. Like I like requirement to know about replication in some companies. So it depends on what company that implement replication and so on and so forth. But it's one of the powerful technology um, that is good. Trust me, it's only is in fact no other. I think Oracle is trying, but Microsoft is the leading force because post gray in fact post gray sql because i use it when i was in my company i wanted to implement they are so worst in terms of 
replication. But Microsoft is, you know, it's on top in terms of replication. And that's why some company go for it. Um, Oracle is okay, but not as powerful as Microsoft um, replication process. Um, so which is a good thing. And um, that's what I would say um, so far. And then, so, and I told us, don't worry about scripting because we have to create a project for you to do scripting much. Um, because I want us to understand view today. We have to practice view, okay? Because I have to go to W3 schools now and take us through views. We have to learn how to use views. Views are very important. So what are views? So I'm going to leave this now for now because I believe that if the replication mesh is working, next week we'll now try to edit something in in the subscriber and see it's going to synchronize. But trust me, it's going to synchronize again. So remember, replication is going to be one of your projects, number one. Number two, that maintenance of database is going to be one of your projects. That's number two. Number three, writing scripts to restore database is going to be one of your projects. Number four, writing script to attach database is going to be one of your projects. They are simple. There might be four lines of code, that one. Um, you won't write script for this. They don't write script for this one. It's too large for replications. You can't do that. But restoring is like two lines, one line, and backup, one line code. And um, what else? Shrinking database, one line of code. You are going to write it. I'm going to give you the task. Um, joining database, I'm going to give you the task. It's easy, trust me. The one that is going to be complex is using group by. I'm going to intentionally look it for you and give you group by and where. And that's when you know the power of where and group by. Okay? So we'll close it. It's all done now. So snapshot is done. So what next? I will now go here and say snapshot is done. I will now go to subscription here. For this thing, I will now say view synchronization status. So I will now say start. I want to synchronize it now. I want it to work because I only segregate for half, after five hours. So it's going to now start working. So it's now applying the snapshot, okay, to the subscriber. So that's it for that. Let's go to W3 schools, everyone. So W3 schools, and then we'll go to school board. We want to do view. We want to do group by. We want to do union. Did we do union last week? No, we didn't. Did we? No. So we want to cover as much on view today. View is very important for us to do. It's very easy. Now, if I go to SQL here, I'll go to view for us. Did we do union? Yeah, we did union last week, I remember. So union is joining two databases that have the same column, the same column, the same column, and the same number of columns as well. And then they have to be in order as well. You can't just join any out table. So it's different from join because you don't need any common ID to, co to, jo to join two tables, but they must be of the same column name, the same name, column name, everything has to be the same, okay? That's for union. Union hall means that it's going to join, including duplicates. It's going to join everything together, including duplicates. Union means that it's going to put everything together without duplicates, okay? That's union, all right? So, I told you that group by, remember in our Tableau course, we are putting some, using measures to do something. Measures are something that you use for aggregation, okay? So group by is, is the work of, you know, trying to use, ag to aggregate your data in the table, okay? So for example, you have a list of country, we did it last week, just want to summarize it because it's one of going to be one of those things you will do a lot in your projects rather than it's what you are going to face in real life. That's what I'm doing. Um, okay. Oh God, my computer is freezing. Uh -uh. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, look, demo database, see? Group by 
Now you could see now they started combining other by. Did you see group by where, where group by other by? Did you see now they are combining it? And this is what you're going to be doing when you say say you want to write SQL script. You must know how to combine them. In fact, with inner join, you use inner join with where with group by, okay? Because where controls. And sometimes you can use where. Do you know that you can use where in place of an inner join? And that's what's going to be one of your projects as well. I've already listed them down. I will say use inner join. And I will say now use where to replace inner join. You don't want to use inner join. You want to use where. Okay. So these are the things we're going to do. All right. So group by is easy. Okay. But you have to understand the rules. The rules is that, for example, you have a country, you have a customer ID, all right? You want to know the number of people that buy from that particular country. What are you going to do? You use aggregate count for the customer ID and group it based on country. Look, this country. So it's going to be counting the country based on the customer ID. So it's not going to say group by customer ID and country. Since you have used count on this, you will not say group by count. You will not say group by customer ID. You only say group country, okay? Now, that's, the, that's how to use it. You see group by with join example. They even mention it here. They have shippers, the shipper name count here, and this one. Look at what they did, left join shippers on this. Group by shipper name you see they did not group this thing here because it has aggregate the reason why the they cannot do it is because it's what we use to determine the number of what you want okay so you cannot group what you are using to determine the number of what you want so that's group by for you and we did having having is it's a clause that you use because the where keyword could not be used with aggregate functions so sometimes you might not be able to use where, okay? You have already used where here, and you have used group by, and then you have to use having, okay? Even though you have where here, you cannot use where again with group by here. You can use having. So, but the having is qualified with group by. Remember what I'm trying to say. Having is what is used to qualify group by. So, for example, now, look, Select country from customers. I want you to select how many how many customers bought bought let me say so how many customers bought iPhone from from Nigeria. Now and I did it. What I'm trying to do is here is that from Nigeria, I first say from country. Do you see now from customers? I say group by country having count. You see, count customer ID. And where is less than five? Do you see what I'm trying to say? Let, that means that where they have less than five here now, it's going to look for it now, okay? But if I want to do it, I can say from customers, where country equal to Nigeria, group by country, having count. But even if you say where country equal to Nigeria, you, you can't group it again anyway. It doesn't make sense because I'm only selecting one country. So the best thing is to just leave it this way. I'm just giving my own example. Um, that's it. Um, so we'll leave that one. That one is done. Um, I want us to go to the main one here. Let's start with view. We want to do view, okay? Did we do view? Let's start with view first, and then we'll go up. We have to create DB. We have to create our DB with script. That one, are, those ones are easy, so I won't jump. And then we are now going to do dates. You must know how to do dates. It's very important. So we'll go do views, we'll do dates. So what is view? View is a virtual, I'll tell you what it means. Now, for example, you have, let me bring my SQL here. Look, I want to show you something. Do you see this adventure works? Okay. I will create, look at what I'm doing now, new query. Okay. I'll show you something. What? so that you understand what view is view is easy when you finish writing your code you want to now turn your code to something that people can query that's what we call view okay 
you don't want to be referring to your table again, you uh, to your database again. You want people to be referring to your own view you created through this table. So I'll show you an example, okay? So I'll show you now. I'm just saying new query. Why is it taking my time? Oh, you know why? The replication is using a lot of resources. That's why. You see what is happening? So that's why it's very slow because it's still doing the um, um, the merge replication. It's not finished yet because it's supposed to come, but don't worry. Maybe I should even stop it. We don't need it again. It's so that we can do whatever I want to do. But in company where you are, they might be using a good, you know, very good resources, so you'll be fine. I'm just a... <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? I'm just a man, yo. Yeah. <laughs> so, hold on. So, I want us to understand view so that in case you come across it in future, um, it's easy. You will see how easy it is and so easy, but... Um, so let's stop this major application is disturbing us. I'll just stop it. <gasps> Where am I going? I'm going to let's get I should go to replication. Oh my goodness, it's so mm -hmm. annoying. It's you see, it's using resources. It don't worry because my PC doesn't have enough resources. So but it's one of the powerful. But when it gets to get advanced, like what I do, I can the, you can allocate resources to replication as well, but later on in future. You will get to know how to do that. And it's part of SQL tuning and all these stuff. Okay. So, um, replication. I want to stop it because it's really, really getting slow. You could see it yourself. It's loading and everything. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think it has finished now. I think it's almost finished. That's why. I, let me just see. I think. Oh, it's finished now. I'll look at this later on. I don't know what it's saying. But it should be fine. It has finished. I think it has, it is done. Anyway, I don't stress myself. So, now, what happened now is that we want to create a view. Now, what you will do first, before you create a view, first, make sure your table is working first. Okay? Now, you look for your, you first that your script is working. So I will say, I want to create a view from person dot person. So I will say, I want to create, look at what I'm doing, my, my people. Look, I want you to listen to what I'm doing, please. I want you to listen, please. Um, columns here. Do we have, hey, <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Now, because we have applied merge replication, do you see row GUID here is there? Is there? It was not there before because we create merge. Merge always put row GUID here, so that's for unique identification. Identification for you know merge replication. That's when you know that your stuff is working. Okay, so for now, we want to create something that have two common ID. I want to get us something that has two common ID. So this one has. Um, Oh God. I'm looking for what would be good. Okay, let's do this one, production.product. Let's do production.product. This one is okay for us. So I'll say, select. See what I'm doing now. Select this from production.product. Select dash hall from production.product. So if I did this, what happened? It's going to execute it, isn't it? It's going to bring everything out. Now, look at what happened here. I did this. Now, this one is just a simple tag. Sometimes you do inner join. And you, have you heard, did you learn what we call alias or something like that? Like in this um, tutorial I've been doing, like if I say, if I say select. Is it alien or alias? Alas, yeah, alas, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I select name as as I will just select name as um as yeah, just as naming from so I just want to show you that. You see now it's call it naming, okay? Now in views. 
okay? If you if you say this in views, okay? This one will appear in views for you. Maybe you don't like the name of the column name. I can say select name, product ID, this and this and this as. And I can be saying select as naming and product ID because uh, hold on um, product ID as ID okay continue you see now ID did you see what I'm doing now so now we have given it a name now if I said name me here look I rename it as this I'm just giving you a scenario it gives it here, but when you try to say you want to create view for it, it's not going to work because you don't do duplicate in views, okay? So you have to note that. So I won't do that now. So in case, just for you to know that, um, in case you are doing something in future and say, why is it giving me error duplicate? Don't just do that. So let's just do this one now first. Now, this are uh, we select all now but i don't want to, i want to have this as my reference i want to give people you know something to to query but i don't want them to be querying this database i can say i want to create a view for them so i will now say create or replace view i can call it view product has you see your code is still here. So make sure your code is working first. Create or replace view. View pro as. Do you see what I'm trying to say now? So, and then that's it. So if I now say, where is, oh, oh sorry, create or replace. Mm -hmm. What is it talking about? Yeah, all is, comp is correct. Create or Maybe, oh, I'm using Oracle syntax, probably. It should not be Oracle. Let's look at their own example here. Oh, Oracle use yeah. create, um, yeah, let me use that. I think they don't use, no, they should use replace their Hold on my people. Um, create view. No, no, I know it's create view, but in Oracle use create or replace. I want to see if it's going to, they have replaced there. They should be, um, because sometimes you want to recreate it again. You don't want to be deleting to recreate. They only have uh, create or replace view. Mm -hmm, they have it. Create or replace. Let me just type this. Maybe I didn't type it well. Let me see. Copy. Let me see. Oh, sorry. Because it's very important. Because sometimes you want to edit something. You can't be going and deleting and then do you get what I'm trying to say, my people? Uh -huh. So, um, view, view product as create or replace view. Why is it doing this? Okay, let me leave it for now. Let's just say create view, okay? Let's just create view. I don't know why it's not saying create Execute. So I've created it now. Do you see now that I've created it? Now, the next time I want to query it now, when you know it's working, what you can do is that you go here, adventure was go to view. I'll look for it. Is it there? Hey, where is it? What should I do? If it's not there, I know it's there, but what's, what should I do? I'll just right click and refresh, okay? But it's there already, I know it's there, but this is it now. You see now, this is the view product I created. So next time I want to do something, I can say select from view product. Probably you have already used inner join, inner join to create your view. Now you are now querying your own inner join you have done. You have already created your own view. You understand what I'm trying to say? So if I do this now, it will now bring everything back. Do you see? That's what we call view. Okay? So Create or replace view, always use it. Okay, please don't use them. Um, don't mind this. I don't know why it's doing that. You see, there's already a named view product in the other. So how am I going to replace it? Maybe it is going to say replace alone. I don't know, but it should be replaced or create view. I don't know why it's doing that. 
Yeah, it's not accepting replace. Strange. I've never seen that before. Create or let me try that. Um, Holy Spirit, what's happening? Incorrect city has near. Huh? I'm surprised. Oh. Create. Let me use and. Huh? Should be all. Oh. Oh. Huh? Be good. I've never seen this before. Yeah, let's now look at the arrow. Can someone Google it now? That's how to troubleshoot problem. Yes, that's a good thing for us to do. You are doing something and you know it's right. And then you see, what's the problem? Because we've created it already. No, you still don't get what I'm saying. Create. That's what I'm saying. You have created it already. But normally, it should, because I want to be editing every time. So, for example, you have already created a view. Now, I want to go back. I want to change some of the things I'm doing. And I want to create the view again. You understand? I should be having create or replace view. Not create. Because if you create, it's going to be giving you errors that is already existed. Mm. You get what I'm trying. So, create or replace means that you you can replace what you have already created before without going back and deleting it already. You get what I'm trying to say? So normally the rules is create or replace. I don't know why it's not doing that. It's absolutely funny, but let's leave it for now, okay? Uh, or we Google it. Should we Google it together? It's the same thing with Oracle. Oracle use create or replace view. So I don't know why it's not working. It's strange. I still use it today anyway at work with Oracle, but it's just strange. Um, yeah, create or replace view. Mm -hmm. It's nonsense. It's absolutely not nice at all. So let's see. Ho. Why are you laughing? It's not nice. We have to get it. I'm not happy. We want to cover a lot. That's why. Ho. Ho. In SQL replace view not working that's how i do make research you have to i'm not the only person that would have encountered that how to make create probably it's funny because i still use it today it's so strange that it is one common problem in my pc probably they will tell me now rather than i might go to options and start setting but i don't want to spoil anything as well so create or replace if it doesn't seem to work in so how do i Port create or replace view to work on SQL. Someone would have answered it. So I'll just go here. You need to check the essence of view, then do create view, alter view, depending on results. If object ID, create view, blah, 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 alter view as. So probably they are training, we should use alter. So we'll be using alter, but normally it should be replace, nonsense. Okay, so we'll be using alter. So we'll be using alter now, yeah, rather than. so. Let's see, create or hold up. Maybe it's still going to say. Hold up here. No, it's not. So we are going to be using other. So it's still the same thing, honestly, to be sincere. Other view as. Yeah. So it's still the same thing, but it's not powerful as create or replace like Oracle. Because if it's not working with SQL like this again here, it's not a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Because what happened, I find myself doing something and I've changed the inner join. I don't need to be going back to where my view is and start right clicking, deleting it, or trying to say alter view. You understand what I'm trying to say? It it is not good. Okay. Okay. Let's say for example, I say view one. Look at what will happen. View one. It will not because it doesn't exist. So I have to be saying create and this. So create or replace is a powerful one. Do you do you get what I'm trying to say now? Create means create it or replace. It means that if you create it, if it doesn't exist, it creates it. If it exists, replace it with the new one. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But hope you understand this. Now you can drop your view. You can say drop view. Drop means that you don't need it again. You can say, you can go to the, you can say drop. And then when you say drop, you don't need all these things because you are just dropping it. I've dropped it. So it's not going to appear here again. So if I refresh, it's not there again, okay? Is that okay for you guys? So that's it. Now, the same thing with stored procedure. But with stored procedure, 
you don't say select star from view product. There's a way to do that. You use ESE key to execute stored procedure, okay? So we are going to practice it now. Is that okay? Um, so let's <sighs> start procedure. What's a comment? Who can tell me what's it? You see, it's the same thing. Creates procedure, procedure name as SQL statement go. Then you now say when you now want to do it. This I will say select. You just say execute it. Do you see? Now. You don't query procedure, you execute most of the time. You execute procedure, okay? So you don't give people to, for example, if you are working with other people, they won't, it's good to always give them view to, to you know, to query your view. You don't query um, procedure. Procedure is not like a table that you, you just execute it. So, for example, SQL have so many stored procedure, and when we're doing, when we are going to start doing tuning, you are going to understand some internal command in SQL to do stored procedure. For example, I can say, what is using my resources? It has stored procedure as well. So I'll say, I want to know what is using my resources in SQL. So I can say, execute SP. You see, it's giving me suggestion. I want you to give me what is using, let me look at what I can look at. I say, um, you see different stop procedure automatically that Microsoft has, you see? So the one that you want, oh, I want you to execute this stop procedure to merge article. Don't worry about all these things, it's just an, you don't, most people don't use it, but they are something you might need sometimes, but sometimes people use, like I want to know, what is happening on my database? How many resources is it using? You understand? So I can say SP add user. I want to add one user. I can say SP add user. I can say add a. So it won't work, but I'm just giving you an example. Okay. Okay. Is that I don't even have permission. So what I'm trying to say is that it's just let me say um subscriber. Let me see what it's going to say. Um execute. User or group of already existing. You see what I'm trying to say? But it's part of what is happening. They have already written the code. It's already in SQL, you know, libraries, but you are now executing it. So you yourself, you can create your own stored procedure so that you can say, I'm executing it. Is that okay? So that's what we call stored procedure. So that's why they said here that stored procedure is a prepared SQL code that you can save. So the code can be used over, 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 and again. Okay, that's stored procedure. And it follow the same thing with view. Create procedure, procedure name. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And then you use SQL statement. The funniest thing that this one doesn't have alter or replace. You just create it. When you create it, you have created it. Is that okay for you? Okay, so later on, we are going to do project on stored procedure. And we're going to do, don't worry, I will guide you all, okay? I will guide you all. That is easy because if you know how to script, you just put it create procedure on the top as that's all. You don't need to stress yourself on anything. Create view as because you already know how to code. And then you just need to understand the concept. As I said, in view, don't create duplicate, you know, duplicate um, column header. You understand what I'm trying to say? So that's what I would say. Is that okay for you guys? So, okay. yep. I thought um, creating a stored procedure has a begin. You don't end. need that. You don't need okay. that. But if you want to be doing that, you can do that. But you don't need that. Begin simply means you are telling the um, SQL, but already knows that begin and go. You don't need on it, honestly those things. You just say create this thing. So you, it is going to do that. So don't stress yourself. <laughs> All right. So later on, we'll do one project also on stored procedures. And one project. So you could see project is a lot for you guys. Trust me, and you get to know how to do that. So that's fine. So don't worry about inner join too much. Just understand the concept. You must understand it, but don't try to say you want to, you have to go faster. There are other things to learn. Okay. So um other ones are create DB, but let's do dates. Date is more important. People struggle with dates. What is date? You will find out that date 
in every database has some people might say they prefer this type of date format some said they prefer only this some might have this and they say you have to split it i want you to split a column that has this type of this time and from format i want you to split one to have this and i want this one to split this one to have hours and minutes i don't want these seconds do you get what i'm trying to say because sometimes you have some applications that have all these mini in fact some might even have many seconds all this a lot okay so how will you work with it that's where date comes from you must know how to work with dates date as rules look at what they did here you can i have to create a special lesson for you for dates on this one because they didn't have enough materials here so because we have to know how to create dates so we might do this next week. It's going to take a lot of time. I have to tell you to practice it. You have to format it. We use what we call format. Sometimes format will not work. You have to use what we call another type of rules, okay? Sometimes you have to convert string to date before you can, you know, sometimes you have to convert date to string before you can use it. So you have to understand. So date is going to be one of our to um, long topic as well so that we, we are satisfied, we know about dates. Because if you don't know how to handle dates, you will come across dates, no matter whether you are going to be, you might not be, anywhere you go, even if you are going to Tableau, you might see a report they give to you, say, we don't want this, we want time, we only want dates. We only want time, and they come with timestamp already, your SQL has timestamp and everything, okay? But they only want dates and time separately. So you have to do that. Or they might say, I want you to calculate the difference between the hour and time. So we have to do that. So date is going to be a long topic for us, okay? Because you are going to come, you meet it, date, trust me. So, because how will you not meet date? Because everything requires time, timestamp. So this one is not enough for us, trust me. So I won't teach us this. I'm going to look for a material for us and we do it exactly as this because there are rules for it. You have to convert. Sometimes you have to convert before you can, you know, get the date, proper date, okay? So that's what I would say. So next lesson will be dates, okay? So that'll be fine. And then create DBs, easy. We can create database. You know, the last time we were trying to, um, where's my SQL table? You do this. Isn't it new database? You can create database yourself mm -hmm. with this. Rather than creating, right clicking, you can use that code to create it. The one you are seeing now, you just say create database name. Create database. Yeah. Um, this one. Okay. Yeah. So you can, if, if you want to practice now, you can do that. Can you create this and see what's going to happen? Create test DB. Can we do it together? Type it. Create database. Yeah. Are you able to create it? So yeah. that's it. It's simple. So you can create it. You see what you can do by, but the one that you cannot do that people cannot do most that they will have problem is merging database. It's not easy. So they use tools like this. But things like backup, you can still use. There was a time I was having problem. I have to use scripts to do the backup properly. So, it's, so these are the things you will learn in your projects, creating with scripts. So, but I'm just giving you this as well to make it to make research. Okay, create database. You can drop. You use one word as well. Drop the DB. You see, it's easy. Drop the database. You put the name there. So I want to drop it. What will I do? So what is the meaning of drop? You must understand. You means that you you are deleting the database. You don't need it again. That's drop, okay? So you can drop the same database now. Can you do that on your PC and see what's going to happen, please? Drop database. Just change this to drop. Drop database. Tap DB. Mm. Okay. Now it's done. 
it's gone good do you have to refresh to make it that to show that it's drop is gone or you it just yes i have to refresh okay good okay backup db in fact they are even teaching you backup db here you see backup database to disk with differential now in fact this is a good exercise for us look let me open it for you in fact it will help in your project the town look so that you understand to this differential back say sk bar is used to create a full backup of an existing sk database syntax backup database name to disk equal to five parts so you now put the five part there now the default is full backup but if you say with differential, you are backing part of it that have changed since the last full database backup. But you have to be careful before you say with differential. So just only use this. But sometimes you have already backed it up. You can want to override it. And that's when you are going to do your project. You must learn how to override database. Okay? Which they don't put here. There's a code to override. That's what you are going to learn. We are going to say you have already created a database. But it's easy. I think you are going to say with replace. You are going to say with replace, honestly, to be sincere. You say with replace, but you will learn that, okay? And that's all, okay? That's backing of scripts. You know, I told you it's no more than two lines of code. You can create table. We did that last time. So you can create, but creating table, you must know what you want. You must know the data type. There are different type of data type. Date, integer, character, this character, string number you understand and so that's it for that one um so i'll leave that so there's difference between drop table and other table other means you want to change the table so they are all one line of code so it's something you can learn yourself you see other table table name it doesn't need any explanation you have already created a table you know the table name you put the name there and then you say i want to add email you say had column name that i did so you now add email so what did you do now you add column to the customer table yeah you add email column to the customer table that's why it's at, at, because you are altering the table you are adding the column name you can drop the column as well drop column column name you can drop the column under the table you see you are altering it as well so that's it constraints is what i will teach you about also you are going to understand this constraint constraint simply means that you have already created a data type but you said i want to put a constraint constraint might be primary key don't insert duplicate there you see so there are different types of constraints you must understand them unique so when you say unique here in, in constraint means that there will never be duplicate in that rows it's going to be one two three four you know, you won't have repetition of numbers or repetition of words there. That's unique. Not new means that that place cannot remain new. Value must enter. If the value is not enter, it's going to throw error. So values must be entered. That's not new. So I can say column one data type, unique, not new. Okay. Primary key. Primary key is the same thing as combination of new and unique because it should not it should not be empty it must be unique and it should not be duplicate that's what he's trying to say foreign key you must define you know you might say i want to make this thing a foreign key do you understand foreign key when i explain to you then a foreign key is a primary key from another table that is being making a reference to another table somewhere that's a foreign key okay so i'll leave that for now don't worry about index for now index is something that has to do when you understand the concept of tuning, you'll be able to do that. So that's what I would say. Now, with this, I want us to go back to the video, watch it, read about replication online, understand it, then I will start preparing for our project because I want us to know how to do inner join, full outer join, and everything. And then I'll make sure that we did a lot by God's grace. And then we cover a lot on stop procedure. It's easy because if you know how to write script, you just say create procedure as 
and then you begin. So that one is easy. But at least you understand views and stop procedure that you can always get it as well. Um, and then also, what else? We're going to do project on backup shrink, writing script to do backup script and um, shrink. Then dates, we have to do dates as well. So dates is our next thing to do. After this, and after this project, we are now going to move to SSRS reporting. Okay, it's similar to Tableau, but this case, you are now saying, yes, I can report, I can produce reports in SQL. Okay, now what happened is, I'm not going to do, until we finish the project, we are not going to move with SSR. I want us to be comfortable with, S, with SQL scripts, okay? Scripting, so we are going to do projects on scripting and replication and maintenance, that one I showed to you that day. The, we have to do it ourselves. I want to get the result. You will send me the screenshot. This is what you did. This is my task. I got it working. If you don't give me, you haven't passed that one. I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> it's good for us. So now you know how to do that. So we have a lot to practice to make sure, because this is what you encounter and must be sincere with you. Okay. And that's what I would say to you. Then you must learn how to how to teach us basic administration skills on Windows. Like I said, I said, do you know how to share a folder? That's how to share a folder. Probably I'll give another test entirely on that later on because I'm going to show us how to write command prompt a little bit. You know, I want to know how to copy a folder to a folder using command prompt. Um, I want to use Robocopy. I want to use PowerShell. Some company might say PowerShell as well. So they are part of Windows administration skills. You know, you want to know how to troubleshoot basic things on, on your PC, okay? So that's it. You must know how to hard users on your PC, you know? Um, so these are those things we're going to do by God's grace. And you will be fine because the more you're comfortable with basic things on the PC, like adding permissions, sharing folders, you get what I'm trying to say, the more you are comfortable to handle other things, uh, you get what I'm trying to say as well. In and then you can you find it more interesting to learn more things as well. You will not be scared of certain things you see because you know how to handle things. Don't delete things. Anytime you are practicing, don't anything you say delete this, don't delete. Don't practice anything, delete on your PC for now. Okay, mm -hmm. please. Uh, you know where. Uh, <laughs> where yes. Unless you are sure, yeah, yeah, sure <laughs> of what you are doing. I delete. don't even delete in anything of my script. All my automation uh, things I've done for company, I don't delete. You just look at because I don't use it. I delete only it, move. It, 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 it. I Where? move and 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 I say, okay, go back to recycle bin. I just don't want any. Is delete is something that is very it's important. <laughs> no, I'm talking about no for SQL. It depends because SQL you cannot say move to recycle bin. But really, if you want to delete, you must be careful first. Anyway, you must always have backup, as I said, you get. But in other things I'm going to teach you, like PowerShell or Windows, don't delete things anyhow so that you don't break what you are doing. So that's it. We must learn command prompt. It's very important for us. Which, what is PowerShell? What is it exactly? Okay, PowerShell is another tool to automate tasks on your PC or to do things like, for example, it was Windows Bash script before, but new system, Windows system now started coming in. For example, when we are using Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows, they are using Bash script. But when um, when, Windows, when Windows Vista comes or Windows 8, they start using PowerShell, it now becomes more effective. So PowerShell, but people still use Windows Bash script a lot. So even though there's PowerShell, people still go back to, so they use both now a lot. But PowerShell is more powerful because because it's more advanced now. They, you can do a lot with it. Now. Is it is it similar to Excel macros? Mm, no, because macros. Excel. No, no, no. It's different because Excel okay. macros is to do Excel's work, but Bash script is to do anything that has to do with anything on your PC, on your files, or anything, even on your Excel a little bit, but not. Um, Excel macros. Do you want? Do you know about Excel macros? Do you want to learn it? It's easy. Do you know I've used macros before. Yes. I, I, yeah. I. The main thing is to just understand so concepts. Macros yeah. will only work on Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. Have you heard of Auto IT before? No. Ah. Okay. 
you have not heard of is when when we finish all these things in future probably i might take one of those things part of um software testing skills um because we i'm going i've spoken to someone that knows about he was in um he was in petroleum engineering before he changed things and he said he wants to move to it role and now he's working as a software tester he's now very good but he started you know you know because I am not interested in software testing anyway, but he's kind of, he's now in the industry, he's now doing well with software testing, like, so he's now doing a lot of testing, he's writing on, it's not this testing that you do, like, he's doing real automation, like doing Java with um, Selenium, c -sharp with Selenium and other things, you understand what I'm trying to say? So not only just manual testing, because manual testing, honestly, to be sincere, it's not, as long as you have the materials to say, it's easy. And understand concept, but the one that is hard is automation of of um, so that means they are you have to code using Selenium or you know Java, Cucumber, all the stuff, yeah. And they are getting a lot of money anyway because um, London, if you have um, this well, so that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what else? Tiki 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 tiki. I hope we learn something today about replication. I hope we learn, but trust me, we are going to start our project after dates. Dates is very important. Um, and then so on and so forth. If you have any question, please practice in your background and so on and so forth. And then don't be afraid because what I've taught you now, you can always go back to it. Be comfortable, okay? Um, and then don't be afraid if you see anything like uh, that's why if we finish this project we move to SSRS don't be ap ap afraid to apply to any job that has SQL don't be afraid because what happens is that if you don't now get engaged in the project the work you apply for you not get the skills you wanted I have never used a replication before I start my work in this country and um, you know when I start working in Aberdeen I've never used a replication before I just but I know about SQL a little bit okay then mm -hmm. And I just started using it because I came from electronics background. Do I know about programming? You understand? So don't be afraid. And then skill style shifting and you now begin to face different things. And then the more you are persevere, you know, you'll be able to you know, skate through. Okay. That's what our advice and everything. So that's what I would say. Any question mm -hmm. before we close? No. Are we going to do SSIS? Yes, but SSIS, yeah, we're going to do it. That will be the last bit, but we're going to do it, go with SSRS first. RS first, okay. Because it's very important. You do, there's SSRS and the SIS, if, it's going to be kind of a warehousing stuff, but we just do the things that has to do with scripting in it and everything, but we might not be able to do real life warehousing or something like that, but we can know how to transform now. We already have a SQL developer, so, we can know how to do transform, load, and everything. Mm. Yeah. So it's easy to com to be comfortable, honestly, with SIS. It's just that it has a name. Doesn't mean that it's difficult. Okay. All right. Mm. So SSIS is more tricky than SSIS. Trust me, because which one? RS. Yes, it's more tricky than SIS. It's just those stupid design layout things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. SSRS. Yeah. Sometimes you're so, designing a report. You don't even know. You can't see what it looks like yeah. until you click click preview. Go back to design. Back to preview to check again. Back to design. Yeah, but it's okay now. As long as you know <laughs> what you are doing later on, you get okay. to. Sometimes yeah. it's just like a rigmarole. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And you are using developer, so you shouldn't have problem, and so on. If anybody has question, let me know, please. I really want to know if you have any question, please. Anyone, any question? Yeah, we're fine. Well, I'm fine for now. Just okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the replication, please go back. You um and all that. The dates. I want us to be there when we're doing the dates, so that I would start looking for the money because the one year is not enough. So they don't even give you anything that you are going to face out there. But dates is something you face even when you are producing reports in ssrs or tableau you have to know how to manage dates um, you know utc you've heard of utc before utc simply means a general universal time whether it's in australia or it's in, in uk how everything is going to combine together into your database mm. um, so yeah 
All right. Um, so that's it. So the project will help us to put what we have learned in practice. Replication, don't be afraid. If you say, can you do replication? Say yes. Go back to the video. I can quickly give you my documentation, but I have to remove what is confidential there. I documented it then, but I'll just um, remove the screenshot, give you another screenshot there, and then you use it anyway. So replication. So summary of what is a shortcut for you to start learning something 10 hours rather than you know going through the main thing um, so that's what i was saying so mm -hmm. that's it god bless you all thank you everyone mm -hmm. i hope i've recorded this thank god i've recorded it yeah thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> because this one is important <laughs> if you forgot da dami do you want to say anything oh she's gone oh she's muted dami okay are you enjoying the class or don't worry i know you yeah, look like... actually i've been i've been working on sql myself like some of the things that you've been saying i'm just trying to follow some of the things like... yeah go back to the video the replications and everything you'll be fine trust me the create view don't be worried don't be worried you, if you know how to script well we'll now say create view and then we'll give you the project you say oh view that's mm -hmm. how it works start procedure because that's mm -hmm. how it works yeah so yeah so you are fine everybody's fine i believe you are fine um by god's grace um so let's finish this and do our projects that's what we'll do okay right so please thank you michael please please prepare for your project too um, and i mean it <laughs> all right thank you so much <laughs> okay all right thank you all right god bless you thank you, you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. good night good night